Hello and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the fur top holiday stockings. These are a really cute and simple pattern crocheted by Jesse Rayot. They include a brand new yarn called Boutique Fur for the top cuff part of the stocking. And then we use the really basic Red Heart Super Saver, which comes in a plethora of colors for the body of the stocking. Look down here, let me show you what you need before you get started. First of all, you can download the pattern for the fur top holiday stockings over at redheart.com. Once you have the pattern, you'll see that there is a full list of everything you need to purchase or to have out before you can start your stockings. But just to give you a rundown, you're gonna need two skeins of two complementary colors of Red Heart Super Saver. I'm using a very nice red and white color because I am making these for traditional uh, Christmas stockings. And then you're gonna wanna get some Red Heart Boutique Fur Yarn. This stuff is fantastic. It is not your normal eyelash yarn. Check that out. There is eyelash on either side of the center seam that sews it all together, and it is fuzzy and furry and just makes you just want to scrunch up in it. It is so awesome. The other thing you're going to need is a USI or 9 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. All of that is just one hook. That's a bunch of information. So you need a crochet hook. I'm going to add in that I want you to have a couple of stitch markers a tapish needle, and a good pair of scissors. Go ahead, gather your materials, and join me back here, and I'm gonna get you started on the toe of the stocking, and then we will work on the body and the heel, and then I will show you what to do to add the cuff. All right, so you have your pattern that you downloaded from redheart.com and all of your materials. Let's go ahead and jump on in. The first thing I'm gonna have you do is put a slip knot on your hook. If you need a refresher on how to do a slip knot, please go check out the slip knot and chain video right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Because this pattern is an intermediate pattern, I'm not gonna spend time showing you how to do a slip knot. Once you have your slip knot on your hook, you're going to do four chains and then join to the very first chain with a slip stitch to complete a ring. Once you have the ring, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna chain two, so one, two. And this counts as your first half double crochet. So this is where your stitch markers come into play. For me, I always like to add a stitch marker into the, the chain that is going to be the last stitch or the last loop or the last chain of my round or my row. Either way, it works. So this last one is gonna be the, it's the first stitch of my round, which means when I come all the way to the end, that's where I'm gonna do my slip stitch join. So I've marked it now so that I know exactly where it is. Now that it's marked, I know that I need to go ahead and I need to do a um, total of eight half double crochets in my ring. So I yarn over my hook and I have the ring here, so it is my big space. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do eight half double crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it looks like I'm running out of room. If I wanted to, because I'm just doing them around a chain or the loops of the chains or into the ring is the better way to say it, I can just scooch them along. So there I have eight, and just to make sure, I'm gonna count the Vs at the top. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I join with the slip stitch into that chain right there that I have marked. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna remove the marker because it's easier for me to get into the chain when the marker is not there, and I just join with the slip stitch. So now I have a full ring completed. See that? Perfect. All right, so the next thing I'm, the instructions say to do is to go ahead and chain two again. So chain one, chain two, and then I need to go ahead and place my stitch marker into that chain two, um, the second chain of the chain two. You can see I have it marked right there. And I'm going to put a half double crochet into each half double crochet around. So I'm gonna end up with a total of 18 half double crochets. So this first one, I put a half double into the same stitch that I had slip stitched into, and now I'm just gonna go all the way around working into each stitch and do two half double crochets. As I'm doing this, what you'll see is that we're creating a nice little circle. Um, yeah, I, did a, I wanna make sure I didn't do a double crochet on the last one. We are creating a well-balanced circle, so there's not gonna be any cupping or anything like that at this point. Once we go past this point of the pattern, though, we are not going to be increasing um, 
at, in in eight intervals. So right now we did eight, and then right and then oh, okay. Let me rephrase that. We did eight half double crochets to begin with, and now we're doing two half double crochets into each one of the eight. But after this one, we will make it to where we are working into um, an increase of six. So it won't be eight, and that will allow for this little portion of the stocking to cup around and become the toe that we need it to be. So once I go ahead and I get all the way around here with all of my two half double crochets into each stitch, it takes a little bit of time, but it will be well worth it. I can jump over to the next part. Now I'm here at the end, so I would slip stitch into that mark stitch. Once again, it's easier for me to go ahead and remove that and then go in and do my slip stitch. So I should have a total of 24 half double crochets because I put two half double crochets into each one of the half double crochets I began with. Now for round three, it has you do a chain two, just like we've been doing, and once again, that does count as a stitch, so I am going to mark it so I know where it is, but now we're gonna put a half double crochet into the same stitch right here. So this is gonna be our increase. And instead of doing a half double crochet in the next one and then doing an increase in the next one like we would do, be doing if this was a basic circle, we are going to change this up and put a half double in this one and a half double into this one and then two half doubles into the next one. What this is going to do is it's creating um, a circle now with six points instead of the eight that we began with. And it's gonna make it to where it starts to cup around. We will continue doing um, increases every round just like this where you will increase at uh, six different points. And when you do that, I'm gonna set this aside, I'm gonna show you what you get. So when you do that, you're gonna finish up the whole piece and you get a, a something like this. So this is where I had my eight crochets all the way around there, eight half double crochets. Then I did two half double crochets into each half double crochet, so then I got to 24. And then I did uh, my half double, two half doubles, half double, half double, two half doubles, all the way around, so I had six increase points. So then that took me to 30. So I went from 24 to 30, which gave me the six increases. Do you see how that works? And then I carried on all the way through round eight, which I need to turn the page so I make sure I'm following along the pattern with you guys correctly. Round seven and eight, once I completed all my increases, were just two basic rounds. There were no increases on these two rounds. So when I finally got to 42 stitches, on round seven and eight, I continued on with 42 stitches, treating each of those half double crochets just as normal. Go ahead and finish the toe of your sock in the color that you want to have on the toe and the heel, and then join me back here. I'm gonna show you how to get started on the body of the stocking. All right, so you've completed the toe of your stocking and it's time to jump in and do the foot. So go ahead and grab your contrasting color, join me down here, I'm gonna get you started. Right now, you should have the toe that looks something like this, whatever color it may be. It should start to cup around and look like it's shaping uh, a toe, right? What we're gonna do is we're going to join our new color right here where we finished off on the last round. And so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put my hook into the same stitch where I did my slip stitch, and I'm gonna grab my new color. And for me, I'm going to use this really nice white. So I'm grabbing my white and I'm going to just join it with a slip stitch for me. So I always join it with a slip stitch. Now the instructions say to go ahead and chain two. And this is where the instructions differ from the toe that we created. This chain two does not count as a stitch. It does not. So I am not going to mark that. The first part of the instructions now say to do a front post double crochet around the chain two of the previous round because that did count as a stitch. So I've yarned over my hook. I'm going into the right side of the post, coming around the back and back to the left side. You can see that my hook is behind the post. So the post is in front of my hook. I yarn over my hook and I have my hook travel back that same path. I come out the left, behind it, and back up to the right. Go ahead now and complete my double crochet just as normal. Now this will be the end of my round. This stitch here, this is where I'm going to join with a slip stitch. So I'm gonna put my marker there just like I normally do. And you'll see I'm putting it through both V's of the stitch I just completed. Now the instructions say that we're supposed to do a front post double crochet around each 
half double crochet all the way around here. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the, the right side, around the back, and come out the left side, yarn over my hook, and have my hook travel that same path. I'm back to my three loops on hook, which I normally would with a double crochet, and I complete my double. I do that for each half double crochet all the way around this circle. Now, the reason it is a front post half or a front post double crochet is because we are putting our hook around the post of the stitch, and the final result is that the post protrudes towards the front. It has a um, proclivity to lean towards the front. If we were doing a back post double crochet, the post stitch would actually be more towards the back. As we go on and do the next round, you'll see where we put the back post double crochet that you're going to begin to get a ribbing-like effect. Actually, doing front post and back post stitches side by side will give you a really nice rib look. You can check out the one by one ribbing uh, video right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel if you want to have a little bit more instructions on that. It is part of the uh, crochet along that I did with Red Heart for the Crochet Stitch Sampler Baby Blanket. Now, right now, I am going pretty quickly doing my front post double crochets all the way around this uh, toe of the sock because I want to get you to the next round. And I'm not doing it slowly because I feel like with an intermediate pattern like this, you should be able to do front post double crochets pretty easily. Um, and I've given you a couple of instructions there at the beginning, but you can see as I get going along, it becomes very rhythmic. It's just like any other double crochet. The difference is only that I'm putting the double crochet, I'm completing the double crochet around the post of the stitch rather than the quote unquote normal position of the stitch, which would be normally like through those V's right there. I'm actually working through the post. So I'm making these really nice post stitches. Um, this is a really fun pattern and I think that it's a great incorporation of post stitches and cabling stitches which are also done with posts. I think Jessie Rayat has done a beautiful job with this and if you want to check out more of Jessie's patterns, I know she has several patterns right here on um, the Red Heart uh, website and you can check out Jessie at Home uh, which is her personal website and it's just does she does a really good job there. Um, she is very talented. She actually did the retro throw, Christmas throw, right here on Red Heart, which is just simply beautiful. So I love her use of post stitches with this pattern. It does start to cramp up my hand a little bit. I won't go, I'm not going to lie right here, like my thumb is a little bit crampy, but it looks really pretty by the time I get going along and working this pattern. So I'm almost here to the very end of the round. And I'm going to go ahead and finish up my front post double crochets. Whoops, don't want that one. And one more. I think I might have this last one here and I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. And then I'm going to count and make sure I have 42 because it's very important that I have the right number. So I'm gonna take the time right now to count. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Perfect. And then remember, I'm not joining to I'm not joining to the chain two that we completed at the beginning. I'm actually going to join where my stitch marker is. So I go ahead and put my hook in there, grab the other end of my yarn, I can find it here, and join with a slip stitch, just like that. So I have the full round. It looks like this on the right side. If I were to flip it over on the inside, it looks like that perfectly normal. I'm going to tuck my ends in so that they are out of the way for me. And we're going to move on to round two. Round two. I'm removing my stitch marker and I'll add it back here in just a second. Round two begins with a chain two and once again it does not count as a stitch so I do not want to mark it. Then it says I'm going to do a front post double crochet around each of the first 11 stitches. So I have all of these front post double crochets and I'm going to do it around 11 of them. So I'm working around the white here. Notice I am not going in here. I'm not going underneath the, the 
the V there and then coming out the V. That would be a shallow post. I'm coming down here to the full post of the stitch, putting my hook in just like normal, and then completing my double crochet. Now that one's going to be the stitch that I want to join to, so I'm gonna grab my stitch marker and then add it right there so I know that that is the end of my round. Okay, I really love using stitch markers. And these little stitch markers here, they have um, upgraded the quality of them and so they don't break on me anymore and I'm so happy with them. The Crystalite stitch markers, they're available at redheart.com. You can totally get them. They come in a, a large package, I love them. So there's one. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to do 10 more, so a total of 11. And then we're gonna move on and we're gonna begin the top of the foot essentially is what I like to think of it as. It's almost like we're working the, um, the instep or the bottom of the foot right now by working these 11 front post double crochets. And then we get to the top of the foot and we start putting a little decoration in it by combining stitches and working a cable stitch. So let's see how many I have here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so now the instructions say that I'm going to do, and this is where there's a bracket, it says back post around the next stitch, front post around the next stitch, back post around the next stitch, and then I'm going to do a cable over the next two stitches. So here we go, we're gonna do a back post, so I yarn over my hook, and going behind my work, so I'm going behind my work here, this is what it looks like, I'm coming in the right side, going over the top of the post, coming out the left side, so this is what it looks like on the inside here, yarn over my hook, and I repeat that path. I come out the left, over top, come out the right, and I'm back here. See how that's pulling that post to the back, and I'm completing my back post double crochet. Now I come back and I do a front post double crochet, double crochet again, and I do a back post double crochet. So I'm coming to the back of the next stitch, going into the right, over top, out the left, yarn over, and then repeat that path. See that, how that worked? And I go ahead and I complete my double crochet. Now it says that we're going to do a cable over the next two stitches. Now the cable is completed by doing front post double crochets. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip this next stitch. I'm working into the next one over, so I'm skipping one and coming over to this one. I'm gonna do a front post double crochet just like I've been doing all along. Now I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna come back to the stitch that I skipped and do a front post double crochet back here. See that? I've gone over the stitch and I'm doing my back post double crochet over there. So now it looks like I have a twist in my stitches. It looks like a cable, okay, right there. Can you see that? It'll look, more, it'll look more pronounced as you keep going along. So now that these two stitches are worked, it's time to move on in the pattern, and the pattern states that I need to go ahead and do a um, back post double crochet. So over the next one, I do a back post. And I'm not gonna go slow for this one because you should know how to do that. And then I'm gonna do a front post. And then I'm gonna go ahead, come back here, and do a back post. Now I have to go and I'm gonna do four front posts. One, two, three, four. Now, all of those instructions from this point over were all done in a bracket, correct? And now it says we need to do that twice. So we've just done it once, so we're gonna do it one more time. So we're gonna repeat our bracket. So we start off with a back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post double crochet, and then I'm going to do my cable. So I'm skipping this one, coming to the next one, go in and out, yarn over, pull through, do my double crochet, get some more yarn here, and then I'm coming back to the skipped one, and I'm going to do my post stitch there also. See that? Now I carry on, I do my back post, my front post, 
and then my back post and four front posts one two three four now remember when I was talking about the action all of these stitches kind of being the top of the foot and that if we thought of this as the bottom of the foot or the heel um, it's just a bunch of post stitches that's exactly what's happening here we have this all of these nice stitches getting made right here on the top of the foot then we have four front post double crochets and it says to go ahead and do a front post double crochet in the next seven well seven plus four is what everybody it's 11 so everything is very symmetrical on this pattern you'll see um, so we're gonna finish off with our seven double crochets all the way to the end and I'll join with a slip stitch to my mark stitch okay go ahead and finish round two and begin round three and then join me back here I'm gonna show you how to work into those cable stitches for round three and then what we're gonna do to them on round four You're done with round two, now it's time to jump in and let's do round three. As you look down here, you can see for round three, I've already done my 11 front post double crochets and it's time for me to work my instructions that are in the bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do my back post double crochet, do my front post double crochet, do my back post double crochet, and now I have to do a cable. Now the reason I wanted to make sure I showed you this is because it might be a little confusing that you're doing a cable on top of a cable. But remember, these two stitches are still independent of one another. So we're going to yarn over our hook and we're gonna skip this one and working into this one, going around the post. So it's the post that's on top, you see that? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to work my front post double crochet. Now I'm going to yarn over and coming back, I have to move the post that's on top essentially. I have to move it to get my hook in there and get around the post that's on the bottom. Can you see that? So that's the post that's on the bottom. And I'm working around that post and I'm completing my cable. Now what this does is it makes it look like it has a really cool twist, okay? So I have a really cool twist and I continue on doing my back post my front post and my back post and then my four front posts I'm going to carry you over to the next cable so I can show you how to do that cable stitch one more time and then I'm going to do my back so I'm doing I'm going through my bracket instructions one more time here so that you can follow along and know where I am in the pattern. So I did my back front and then this is my back and it's time for a cable. So I'm coming over here, this is, if this were separated, this is the first stitch I'm skipping, I'm coming over here to the second. I'm gonna yarn over, pull up a loop and complete my double crochet. And now I've gotta come over here back to the one I skipped, it's right there, you see it? It's kind of hard, you have to finagle the front post out of the way a little bit to get to it because it's behind it, right? And then you complete it and you carry on working your double crochets, back post, front post, back post, and then front post all the way to the end. What's really great is as you're working along like this, you'll be able to do the stitches as they're presented essentially. So if you're looking at a front post, you do a front post. If you're looking at a back post, you do a back post. Makes it really easy and you don't have to keep looking back at the pattern all the time. Where this differs is on round four when you come to the cable section because when you do the cables for round four, you actually aren't doing cables. You're gonna treat those cable stitches just as front post double crochets. So you won't do any twisting to them or any sort of finagling of the stitches. They just are going to be front post double crochets like we've been doing like I'm doing right now right so I'm gonna finish up this one and then join over here and then I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and begin my round four right now since I just showed you guys round three all right so I just finished the 11th front post 
double crochet. And for the brackets for round four, it says I'm going to go ahead and do my back post where I've normally been doing it, my front post, and then my back post. And now I'm going to do two front post double crochets around these two stitches. So I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to go into the one that's in back first, right here, because that's the one that's first. I'm not skipping it this time. And now I go into the one that's in front. Can you see how that looks like a twist right there? It looks like a really cool cable. I hope you can see it. It looks really neat. And then I can carry on with my bracketed instructions, which is back post, front post, and then back post, so on and so forth. So these instructions are really easy, right? You keep going on doing these stitches, okay? 